Luck will knock at your door at least once in your life, so keep following your passion just like Tad. Tad Stones believes he was born to be an archaeologist. He grew up without his parents and his grandmother took care of him. As a child, he was always digging up his backyard to find treasure. Tad didn't care about the other kids making fun of him. He was totally focused on his target. Once he found something shiny like gold, but it turned out to be just his father's lost cufflinks. However, his grandmother kept motivating him and believed that one day Tad will bring fame to the family. Time flies really quickly and Tad is a grown man now. However, he hasn't given up on his passion yet. He was unable to secure a decent job and ended up being a construction worker. But Tad is still waiting for luck to knock at his door. Even at the construction site, he keeps looking for vintage stuff. Today he found an old Coca-Cola bottle that could be rare. Tad gets really delighted, but his boss isn't. He scolds Tad for messing around and bringing his dog Jeff to the working area. And in the next moment, Tad gets fired from his job for the seventh time. His co-workers are worried about how he would survive, but Tad isn't. He gets in his car and rushes to the museum to verify the authenticity of the bottle he found. A well-known senior archaeologist, Professor Humbert, works at the museum. Regardless of Tad's continuous failure, Professor Humbert is always ready to check his findings. Unfortunately, the bottle he brought isn't an original one. Tad gets disheartened and decides to give up on his dream, but Professor Humbert tries to console him. An archaeologist doesn't find treasure every day. Tad has to be patient. After verifying the bottle, Tad delivers a letter to Professor Humbert. It's from another senior archaeologist, Professor Lavrov. He's delighted to inform Humbert that he has found the missing part of an ancient tablet. Humbert had found a key to the lost city of Paititi 30 years ago, but the key tablet was missing a part. Finally, Lavrov has found that part and the legendary city of Paititi can be discovered. Professor Humbert has to catch the flight to Peru in the next two hours and meet Lavrov. Tad offers Professor a quick ride and on the way he gets to know about Paititi. Around 500 years ago, when the ancient tribe of Incas discovered that their rival wanted to steal all their gold, they asked Mother Nature for help. Mother Nature told them to take all their gold to a secret place, Paititi. Once they hid the treasure in exchange, Mother Nature gave them a magic golden statue. The Gold Indian of Paititi. It's a statue with magic powers. Whoever guards it will be blessed with the gift of immortality. So the tribe may still exist in the hidden city of Paititi. That's why Professor Humbert is excited about his discovery. After reaching the airport, he rushes towards the airplane and forgets his bag behind. Tad follows him to return the bag, but Professor Humbert slips over the wet floor and falls down on the luggage. He asks Tad to feed him the medicine, but Tad accidentally gives the professor sleeping pills. Now Professor Humbert will not be able to fly for the next few days, so Tad takes his place to deliver the tablet. This is the start of his long-awaited adventure. As he reaches Peru, a weird guy named Freddy welcomes him. Tad lies about being a professional archaeologist to live the life he always wished for. Freddy is also a part-time seller and always tries to sell unpopular objects. He also forces Tad to buy a Swiss pincher from him. Suddenly, an SUV drives there and kidnaps Tad in a blink of an eye. A scary guy with a robotic arm named Kaponen asks Tad about the tablet. Tad shows his ID to prove he isn't Professor Humbert, but the Kaponen still doesn't let him go. Tad remembers the Swiss pincher he bought from Freddy. He uses it to break out the SUV. Freddy catches him and pulls him inside a car. It's driven by Professor Lavrov's beautiful daughter, Sarah. Koponen's man fires a strange bomb at the car, and Jeff eats it accidentally. Sarah takes Tad to her house, but before they reach there, the SUV guys had already investigated the place. Sarah gets worried that her father may have been kidnapped, but then she finds Lavrov's loyal bird, Belzoni. It delivers a letter sent by Lavrov. He has eloped to Machu Picchu to escape Koponen's evil plans. Sarah decides to follow his father, and Tad is ready to accompany her as he has already fallen in love with Sarah. She goes through Lavrov's belongings and finds the remaining part of the tablet. She joins it with the other one Tad has and the key is complete. They ride the train to Machu Picchu, but Koponen is following them too. He easily snatches away the tablet, but Tad wraps himself around his feet and Belzoni flies away with the tablet. The bird drops it on the train's roof and Sarah rushes to catch it. Unfortunately, she gets caught by the bad guys while Tad is getting beaten by Koponen. Belzoni comes back again to snatch the tablet and drops it on another spot. Both Tad and Koponen run to catch it, but Koponen notices the upcoming tunnel, so he jumps down into his van. Meanwhile, Sarah and Tad fall into the stable. They use this as a chance to escape while riding the alpacas. After a few tiring miles, they finally reach Machu Picchu. Freddy goes to grab a meal while Sarah and Tad rush to meet Professor Lavrov. But again, the professor is missing. Sarah gets really sad as he's the only one she has after the death of her mother. Tad advises her not to give up and continue the search. 
They reunite with Freddy and grab some food, but suddenly Koponen attacks them out of nowhere. He can somehow track them easily. He spreads his men around the city to catch Tad and Sarah. After running here and there for a while, Tad and his team ride a hot air balloon to escape the city. After flying up a few miles, Tad notices that Jeff is not feeling well. He's suffering from nausea and vomits out the bomb he ate earlier. It was actually a tracking device. That's why Koponen could easily find them every time, just like now. His men surround the balloon from all sides and capture everyone. They take them to the desert where Professor Lavrov is imprisoned. The famous archaeologist Max Morden is there too. Tad confesses being the biggest fan of Max, but then he gets to know Sarah is actually Max's girlfriend. His heart breaks on losing his first love, but he keeps himself strong. Koponen arrives there too and asks Sarah for the tablet. He puts it over a stone and the map to Paititi is finally complete. Koponen asks Professor Lavrov to read the map and he notes down the clues. Before leaving with Koponen, Professor Lavrov winks at his daughter. The map he just read was fake and the real map is somewhere else. Tad uses the little archaeologist skills he has and finds a hidden door. It leads to the real map. Meanwhile, Freddy tries to steal an ancient shield but it causes the whole pyramid to collapse. Sarah immediately reads out the clues on the map and they all rush out safely. Tad drives an excavator and they finally get out of the desert. They travel to the forest to reach the actual address of Paititi, while Koponen is busy digging up at the wrong place. On their way, Tad tries multiple times to reveal his true identity to Sarah, but he's afraid that she might not respect him after knowing that he's just a bricklayer. After spending the night in the forest, they split up to find the gate to Paititi. The forest is full of wild animals and a scary puma starts running after Tad. Sarah and Freddy climb up the tree while Tad is stuck down alone. After distracting the puma, Tad hides under a tree trunk. Sarah throws coconuts at the puma and it runs away. She calls Tad to come outside but she doesn't know that Tad has found the lost city. He calls everyone to follow the hidden route and they reach the hole that will lead to the treasure. A bunch of bats fly out of the hole and it can be seen from where Koponen is. He understands that Professor Lavrov lied to him and reaches where Tad and Sarah are. Max takes Sarah along with her and orders one of the Koponen's men to kill Tad and Freddy. Deep under the hole there are two gates. Lavrov suggests going through the first one and everyone follows him. Meanwhile, Tad has realized that Max is the real culprit behind all this. He wants to tell this to Sarah but he needs to save his life first. He rides the excavator to escape the goons but Jeff distracts him and the excavator falls down. Luckily, Belzoni brings the bats and attacks the goons. Tad leaves the pets with Freddy and jumps inside the hole. He follows the other gate and meets the guardian mummy. Tad screams in fear and runs through the tunnel nearby. It leads him to Max and others. He reveals the truth about Max, but in return, Max also tells Sarah that Tad is just a construction worker. Sarah slaps Max's face and regrets falling for such an evil guy. She's also angry at Tad for lying about his identity. While they are arguing, the mummy is planning how to get rid of them. He throws a huge burning stone ball at the intruders. Everyone makes it to the other side while Tad hangs down the broken bridge. Only Sarah rushes to help him and drags him out of the danger. The incident kills a bunch of guards and the survivors enter the next milestone. There are different colored ropes hanging down the ceiling. Only one of them can open the gate to the golden statue while others will open the ground to the boiling lava. Tad knows that Max will discard them as soon as he gets the statue so he plans to kill Max and Koponen. He tells Sarah and Professor Lavrov to move to the wall and he hangs down a bunch of ropes. The ground starts to break open, but Max and Koponen hang on the ropes. Koponen rushes to kill Tad, but he uses the Swiss pincher to make Koponen lose his grip. Meanwhile, Max pulls down the red rope to open the gate and reaches the legendary statue. The guardian mummy stops him and appears riding a stone monster. Max pretends to be guilty and distracts the mummy. Afterward, he snatches the monster's control from the mummy and rides it by himself. Tad reaches there too and saves the mummy from falling down. Then he climbs up the monster to stop Max but fails. Max orders the stone master to grab Tad and squeeze out his life. The mummy pays back the kindness and steps forward to help. He throws the iron locket toward Tad which he uses to hit Max. The stone monster falls down but Max gets his hand on the statue. He's going to achieve immortality but it comes with a prize. Max has to live forever being a mummy. There's a whole city of mummies living behind the stone passage. The Guardian Mummy orders to put Max in the dungeon. He can't let Tad and others go as they may reveal the Petiti secret. Tad takes out his most valuable treasure, his father's cufflinks he found as a kid, and gives it to the Mummy. It's a guarantee that Tad will keep it a secret and will not let anyone disturb the mummies ever again. After the tiring adventure, Tad, Sarah, and Lavrov return to the forest. Tad apologizes to Sarah for lying and letting her fiancé get caught. 
Sarah smiles at him and confesses that she has already found her real hero, and that's Tad. These words are like music to Tad's ears. He has finally found the treasure he yearned for so long. Finding money or gold is not all the treasure one can find. The biggest treasure in the world is having loved ones in your life and staying happy with what you already have.